So we'll actually see how to do it with much less trig. So that will be easier in polar coordinates. So we'll see that tomorrow. Okay, so, but you know, we are almost there. I mean, here you just use the double angle again and then you can get it and it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so one thing that's kind of interesting to know is we can exchange the order of integration. So if we have an integral given to us in the order dy dx, we can switch it to dx dy. But we have to be extremely careful with the bounds. So you certainly cannot just swap the bounds of the inner and the outer because there you would end up you know, having this square root of 1 minus x squared on the outside and you would never get a number out of that. So that cannot work. It's more complicated than that. Okay, so, well... Here's a first baby example. Certainly, if I do the integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 2, dx dy, I can, there I can certainly switch the bounds without thinking too much. What's the reason for that? Well, the reason for that is, you know, this corresponds in both cases to integrating x from 0 to 2 and y from 0 to 1. It's a rectangle. So if I slice it this way, you see that y goes from 0 to 1 for any x between 0 and 2. It's this guy. If I slice it that way, then x goes from 0 to 2 for any value of y between 0 and 1, and it's this one. So here it works. But in general, I have to draw a picture of my region and see how the slices look like both ways. Okay, so let's do a more interesting one. Let's say that I want to compute integral from 0 to 1 of integral from x to square root of x of e to the y over y and dy dx. So why did I choose this guy? I chose this guy because as far as I can tell, there's no way to integrate e to the y over y. So this is an integral that you cannot compute this way. So it's a good example for why this can be useful. So if you do it this way, you're stuck immediately. So instead, we'll try to switch the order. But to switch the order, we have to understand what do these bounds mean. Okay? So let's draw a picture of the region. Well, what we're saying is y goes from y equals x to y equals square root of x. Well, let's draw y equals x and y equals square root of x Well, maybe I should actually put this here, y equals x to y equals square root of x. Okay? And so I will go, for each value of x, I will go from y equals x to y equals square root of x. And I will do that for values of x that go from x equals 0 to x equals 1, which happens to be exactly where these things intersect. So my region will consist of all this, okay? So now, if I want to do it the other way around, I have to decompose my region. The other way around, I have to... So my goal now is to rewrite this as an integral. Well, it's still the same function. It's still e to the y over y, but now I want to integrate dx dy. So how do I integrate over x? Well, I fix a value of y. And for that value of y, what's the range for x? Well, the range for x is from here to here. Okay, what's the value of x here? Let's start with the easy one. This is x equals y. What about this one? It's x equals, x equals y squared. 
Okay, so x goes from y squared to y, and then what about y? Well, I have to start at the bottom of my region, that's y equals zero, to the top, which is at y equals one. So y goes from zero to one. So C, switching the bounds is not completely obvious. That, that took a little bit of work. But now that we've done that, well, just to see how it goes, it's actually going to be much easier to integrate because the inner integral, well, what's the integral of e to the y over y with respect to x? It's just that times x, right? From x equals y squared to y. So that will be, well, if I plug x equals y, I will get e to the y minus if I plug x equals y squared, I will get e to the y over y times y squared, e to the y times y, okay? So now if I do the outer integral, I will have the integral from zero to one of e to the y minus y e to the y dy, and that one actually is a little bit easier. So we know how to integrate e to the y. We don't quite know how to integrate y e to the y, but let's try. So let's see what's the derivative of y e to the y. Well, by the product rule, that's one times e to the y plus y times the derivative of e to the y is y e to the y. So if we do, okay, let's put a minus sign in front. Well, that's almost what we want, except we have a minus e to the y instead of a plus e to the y. So we need to add two e to the y. And I claim that's the antiderivative. Okay, if you got lost, you can also do it by integrating by parts, by taking the derivative of y and integrating this guy. Um, or, but you know, that works. Just, you know, your first guess would be maybe let's try minus y e to the y Take the derivative of that, compare, see what you need to, to do to fix. And so if you take that between zero and one, you will eventually get E minus two. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to see how to do double integrals in polar coordinates and also applications of double integrals, how to use them for interesting things.